Many of us are anxious to get our lives back to normal. But for that to happen, enough of us must get vaccinated against COVID-19. I'm vaccinated and encourage you to take your best shot by doing the same as soon as possible. People from diverse races and ethnicities tested the vaccines in large clinical trials to prove they are safe and highly effective. Getting vaccinated for COVID-19 is free and does not require proof of residency, citizenship, or insurance. Houston Health Department vaccination clinics accept walk-ins and are located across the city. Find a nearby site at HoustonEmergency.org or by calling 832-393-4220. R832-393-4301. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
The scripture reading this evening will be coming from the third chapter of the book of 1 John. I'll begin reading at the 18th verse. It reads, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, the maker of all things, 
the creator, the sustainer of all. The father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. Father, it is once again we come before you to worship, to praise your holy name. Father, how excellent thou art in all things. You allowed us, Father, to come to this point in this day. Father, and for that, we just want to simply say thank you. Thank you, Father, for being the God of lights, the eternal flame, the God that lifts us, the God that carries us, the God that makes a way for us. Father, bless your name. We need you, Lord. Like we've never needed you before, Lord, we need you now. Father, we praise you, we adore you, for you are God, and you are God all by yourself. Thank you, Father, this day, as we've never thanked you before. Father, you looked out over us. You didn't allow the storm to wash us away. One more time, Father, and for that we say thank you. Thank you, Father, for watching over us as we came and as we left. Thank you, Father, for abiding in us even right now. Oh, Lord, we love you. We praise your holy name. Father, I would be remiss if I didn't come before your throne of mercy and pray over the very souls that come to worship you, Father. Be it in person, be it on the social networks, but Father, they came to worship you, Father. They look out over you, Father. Bless your Holy Spirit, Father. Touch the shepherd of this church, Father. Your church, Father. Bless he and bless his family thereafter. Give them what they need, Father. And then, Father, I pray that you bless all of us, all of those under the sound of my weak voice. I pray you touch them, Father, as only you can, Father. Because a blessing is to be had, but Father, it is only from you. There's none other that we look to, Father, for our help, because all of our help cometh from you, Father. We look to the hills, but we see you, Father. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you for your Holy Ghost, Father. Thank you for your might. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Heavenly Father, we praise your name. We look to you this day, Father. Bless and touch the children, Father. They are headed back to school, Father. But we pray, Father, that you look out after them. They're going into a cruel world, a dying world, Father. But you, Father, are life. And you give it to us. And Father, for that we say thank you. Praise your holy name, Father, this day as in every day. We pray to you, O oh God. And we pray to you, Father, in the mighty name of your darling son, Jesus. Jesus, our way maker. Jesus the eternal God. Jesus, my hope for today, my hope for tomorrow, my hope for everlasting, Father Jesus. 
And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pour out. 
Joy. He's my joy. 
people said amen thank God for our singers on tonight that ministered to us in song thank God for, for them and let me thank God for the mind of brother Don Hill amen amen to Reverend Langston who gave us our scripture and our prayer. I want to thank God for him. To all of you that are, are here on tonight, and, uh, good to see Sister Fisher, our, our president. It was good to see uh, Brother Cherry, our co-chair. Good to see uh, the Shorters. They are yeah. a fixture on Sundays and, and Wednesday nights. I bless each and every one of you for uh, your presence on tonight. And Sister Jones and Sister Graham, the duo in the back that comes in on Wednesday night uh, as well. And to all of you, and, uh, good to have uh, Sister Lang Lang back in the house of the Lord. Thank God for her. It's good to, to see you on tonight. Uh, all of us should know if we don't know that God is still in blessing business. Even in, in the midst of where we are now, what we are going through, God is, is still in the blessing business. I would tonight that we're not going to stand to read it. Uh, Sister Cherry, I'm going to even give us a cheat sheet tonight. And that if 
we turn to Matthew in chapter 25, verse 21. Now, again, you don't have to stand. We're not going to read it. Good to see all of the ministers here, uh, Reverend Jackson, uh, Reverend Smith, Reverend Langston, Reverend White. Yeah. Good to see, see them uh, here on tonight. Amen. We're going to make sure that next time Sister White sings about her husband, we're going to get him a separate mic because she held the mic down at her belly button like her stomach was growling. <laughs> so I want to make sure he has his own mic so I can hear that bass voice, that baritone. Sister Faith told her to hold it up. She held it up for 20 seconds and went back down. I, I, I don't know what that was all about. Amen. I sure want to say something right there what it could be, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it alone. Leave it alone. We thank God for our uh, video ministry downstairs and upstairs. Let's talk tonight. Let's let's talk tonight. I have heard this this phrase or this saying most of my Christian life. Didn't hear it on the streets. Didn't hear it on the cuts. But most of my Christian life, I've heard it. The fact is that many of you have heard it as well. In fact, it's mainly brought up uh, and out at homegoing services. Sister Solomon is, is, is brought into play at memorials and, and wakes and funerals. And this is what we hear. And when it's all over, I just want to hear him say. And everybody in the house be helping me finish it. Servant, well done. You've been faithful. Come on, help me. Over a few things. Come on up higher. And I'll make you ruler over many. Any, anybody heard that other than me? And, 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 and when we hear that, Brother Shawna, many folk began to wave their hands. Sister Shawna, many folk, they don't shout on nothing else. They shout on servant. Well done. But our problem is, we want to hear him say, well done. But we do not want to do well with what he's already done. Let, let, me, let me say that again. I, I didn't think I'd get any amens, but let me say that again. We want to hear him say. And if you don't want to hear him say, when it's all over for me. I don't care how you testify, how you testify, but I want to hear him say, servant, well done. But the problem is, God has already done well with us, but we have not done well by him. Your promotion was not for you to make more bills, but rather to give more to God's work. Your raise was not just for you to move out of the neighborhood, because everyone else is doing it. 
But maybe God gave you the raise to help people right there in the neighborhood where you are. You're always running from ministry when God set us in place to do ministry. Where else but Sunnyside would I want to be? Because ministry is right here in Sunnyside. God graces us with the ability that we have not to run from, but to run to. And many of us are high class in dress code, but we are worthless servants in ministry. We know how to dress. We, we know when to dress. We walk in with hats larger than an umbrella, with suits with more buttons than the factory have. We dress good. In fact, some of us, we know when you're going to shout by what you're dressed in. We are rich in jewelry, but we are worthless in ministry. We dress good. We look good. We drive good. I mean fat cars. Expensive cars. We live good. Living in places that folk don't even want you in the neighborhood. But we've done nothing. For the ministry. But yet, we want to hear him say, Well done. When was the last time that you got your stimulus check that you really didn't qualify for? But you fudged and forged numbers. And when you got it, you lied on God and say he's blessing me. And when you got it, how many times did you give $300 to the food bank? That's ministry. And I'm not talking about cutting your tithes short to give it. But I'm talking about cutting some of the hassle-ons and barbershop meetings short. And making sure that those that do not have what we have can receive what we already have. They got real quiet, even on Zoom. I can't hear them, but they got quiet. I'm talking about skipping buying another suit. Buying a new purse. But giving to somebody that's less fortunate than you are. That's ministry. When was the last time you upped your tithes and your offerings? Because God had blessed you with an increase in finances. When the last time you sat your children down and talked about the word of God. Not you need to go to church, but the word of God. 
Maybe your talent is not to sing. But you ought to have a talent to want to praise. And all of this COVID-19 and Delta stuff going on. I don't know about you. But I want to make sure. I want to be assured that if the Lord comes and get me, that no matter what you say, but that he says, servant, well done. Somebody else other than me ought to want to hear them. And I found out that my well done is not tied to your gifts. But my well done is tied to my own gifts. This parable is a parable on faithfulness. And Jesus tells the story of three servants. The master went on a journey and he gave each servant a specific amount of talents. He gave them a specific amount of money. The talents were Silver. Silver is tied to being weighed at 58 to 80 pounds. Thus the master entrusted the servants with the considerable amounts of money. And watch this. The amounts were in keeping with the men abilities. Watch what the master did and what he did not do. He did not give the five to the one who can only handle one. In other words, the master did not set the servant up for failure, but he gave him what he can handle. And some of you are wondering why God won't give you millions when you can't handle hundreds. Watch this. That's a word for us tonight. That I have to be a servant over what God has given me. Can I help you right quick? I'm happy for my brother at Willow Avenue. They're, they're complete now. And, 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 and I'm happy for him because that's what God gave him. And, 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 and he's not going any higher in heaven than I am. Because I don't have as much as he has. God will grade me on what he gave me. So I don't have to pray like somebody else pray. I don't have to sing. Maybe you don't have a voice to sing. But you ought to have a voice to say amen. Maybe you don't have the voice to sing a solo. But you ought to be able to sing from the pew. Maybe I don't have 5,000 members, but I'm glad with the 853 that I do have. And I'm not going to change pastors because of the size of your church. I, I think my pastor have about 30 members, but that's my church. 
And if I change, I won't be changing because of the size. Because I'm a mind the corner where God has placed me. Can I go ahead and tell you tonight? From that baby to the oldest, somebody can say amen. Because God has given all of us a responsibility. And no matter who you are, where you are, where you are in church, God has given you a responsibility. And your ability for what God has given you will determine if he says well done. It's according and rewarded to their faithfulness with additional wealth. You thought you got that permission and you got a new position by luck. But God was testing you. And he was wondering how much can I give you for you to continue to rob me? How, how, how much, how, how long can I let you make straight A's in school and you don't have enough sense to tell me thank you? How, how much, how long can I let you study and, and, and you're struggling in your studying but I give you a passing grade and you don't never tell me thank you. Some of us ought to pay God for how he's covered us. Some of us ought to give our whole paycheck. You think you're giving your paycheck to the preacher. You ain't giving me nothing. You're giving your check to the master. Can I go ahead and tell you? A fool and his money shall soon fall. But when I give the best of my service, when I give the best of my ability, when I give the best of my talent, I'm assured to hear him say, Sabbath! Well done. I can't sing like Brother Donald Ray here. Brother Donald Ray Hill can't sing like Reverend Max Pepper. You may want to hear him sing. But when I get in my shower, I have an audience that love to hear me sing. And the same God he sings about on the organ, I play my own organ in the shower, and the Lord gets the glory, whether I'm in the choir stand or the shower. He knows my ability. Somebody ought to leave here tonight and when you get in your car, you ought to start singing. He knows my name. You couldn't sing it in here because you sound like a broke record. But when I get in the car, because he knows, he knows my name. And he knows my name, but he knows my ability. Watch what he does. He gives the first one five talents. He gives the second one two talents. He gives the third one one talent. And can I tell you how I know it's not tied with how much money you have in your bank account? Because the one that had the five and the two got the same reward. He told them both. Sir. Well done. But watch this. The reasoning for the one. got his stuff taken it's because he proved himself to be worthless he lost everything he had and was cast in the judgment Pastor Robinson told us nothing ain't the best that any of us can do you come to church and you can't raise your voice above a whisper to shout glory and you know without a shadow of a doubt that God have raised you God have brought you through and somebody in here other than me I'm not the only one that should be dead sleeping in my grave I need some folk to wave at me tonight that you know it was nobody but the Lord 
And you talking about it don't take all. Let me go ahead and tell you, it take all of that for me because I can't wait to hear him say, Seven, well, I need the Lord to talk to me before I die. I want him to know I love him while I live because when I'm stressed out, I'm dead and gone. I want him to say, you've been faithful over a few things. After a long time, the Lord came back. And you do know you're coming back. Brother Cochell, you know he's coming back. Because if you look at it, this depicts, it represents, it illustrates the second advent. Matthew is not just writing. Jesus is not just talking. He's not just giving illustrations just to tell a story. He's preparing us. And his preparation tells us that even if I've been messed up for 50 some years, 60 some years, tonight when I leave here, I'm going to turn the boat around because the way I'm living now, he ain't going to say nothing. But I want to hear him say. The first two, again, received the same thing. But for Shada, we've been shortchanging ourselves. Sister Fisher, we better stop listening to folk. Because I don't get my shout on just because. He says, well done. I'm going to mess with somebody. From Langston, he, he says, you've been faithful over a few things. And because not that you sound so good, not because you know how to hunk it off and go to Calvary, but because you've been faithful over the little bit that you, can I tell you, I thank him for the little bit I got. He says, because you've been faithful over that which I gave you, stop always looking at what somebody else has. And thank God that he gave you something. I can't go buy a new car every year. But the cars I have run pretty good. And if we're trying to get to the same place, just the car get me where I'm trying to go. So I thank him. But, 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 but right there, we've been cutting ourselves short. Can I tell you what? Watch this. Because I've been faithful over the little bit that he's given me, because I've been faithful with what he decided was my ability for me to handle, because I tried so hard. Let me park right there. He didn't bless them. Because they doubled it. He blessed them because they gave all they had. Because see, some of you make more money than me. And you want to brag because I can't give but 400 a week and you can give 550. You, you want to brag because you're giving more. God don't care about you grudgingly giving a giving just so somebody can see you. You know that was a woman that only gave two mites and Jesus said that woman right there gave more than any of you that gave hundreds because you gave out of your surplus. She gave all she had. So it was because they tried so hard. Not for pay because I just preach. You can't pay me enough for me preaching. 
you can't pay me enough because every preacher ought to make friends with an ant. An ant in the summertime will risk his life knowing if he bites you is an 80% chance he's going to die. But he's making preparation. And he's making preparation for the winter time because the winter time stuff started wearing out. And he knows whatever he don't get in the spring and the summer, when fall comes and it's time for him to go under, he makes sure he makes preparation, knowing every day might be his last day. Preaching is like an ant. Every day I stand here and open my mouth loud, I can get bronchitis, have a heart attack, have an aneurysm with all of this hollering mouth locking up. And you sitting there looking at me like I ain't saying nothing. I'm just a spiritual ant. But guess what? I love what I do because God gave me the ability to do it, and I'm gonna do it till He kills. The end. I don't holler because it makes you move. Because I'm looking at some of y'all ain't moved yet. And I, I know your story. I can't tell it. But I know it. And I look at you because I'm wondering, what else do I have to say about him? To make you at least raise. It. When I told you the Lord is good, somebody's hand should have been up. And sometimes I wish that God would nod his head like we do. Lord, I need you right now. Lord, I'm on my deathbed. I'm getting ready to have, sir. Lord, you know I'm dying right now. I need. I wish God would nod his head at some of y'all in the crowd today, some of y'all on Zoom, some of y'all on Facebook. I wish God would just nod his head sometime. Maybe it'll light a fire under your butt. And I'm scared that instead of telling you well done, he might tell you I know you not. I get paid every time the Lord give me an opportunity to talk. Because of my bank account that I get paid from is not in this world. I'm a millionaire. Because God got my account. And when he said, it's no doubt in my mind that when it's all over with for me, he's going to say, well done. But let me tell you, he has my account. And when he looked at my account, because it was already paid in full, I have access in my account. I'm just glad. What he decided was my ability. Because I love what I do. But I love more who I serve. And because of all of that, my Lord, my Master, here's a shout piece. Not that I'm rooting, let, 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 me, let, me, let me hit it. Because too many of you all don't want to move on because you think you own something. And you take this particular scripture talking about I'm the ruler, I run this, I'm the president, I'm the shot. Let me tell you something. God will take you out of here and they'll have president on your program in your obituary and the person reading it will be your next replacement. Watch this. Ruler does not mean dictate. What he says, what some of us cannot handle, he says now, because you've been faithful 
over a few things. I'm going to give you more responsibility. And you ain't going to run nothing. But I'm going to set you there. And I'm not setting you there because you're so smart. I'm setting you there because you're so faithful. You're not going to dictate. You, some of us can't handle positions because as long as we're followers, we're good. But somebody make us a leader, all hell breaks loose wherever I lead. But I come by to tell you tonight, he's to set you over something to give you more responsibility because you've demonstrated with your altruistic behavior that you can handle a little bit. And God says, surely if you can handle a little bit, I want to give you some more responsibility because I need somebody to carry the cargo. I haven't given you a shout piece yet. I've been faithful and with my faith comes more responsibility. And with more responsibility means because I've done it right, Brother Cherry, God elevates me. And when God elevates me, I got happy right there, but I didn't shout. Because I asked him, why you give me them? He said, because you were faithful over them. And I prepared you through your faithfulness. Because you have to remember, I'm the one that divided the talents. And if I gave you the most talents, I gave them to you because you fit the requirement. And I give my best test, my hardest test to my best students. And you pass the test because you've been faithful over the little bit that I have. So now I'm going to give you more because your head won't swell when I put you over it. want to know tonight why, why everybody come to you and your family? Because he put you there. You want to know when folk want to pray why they come to you? Because God put you there. You ought to be shouting that God trusts you enough to pray for your family. You ought to be shouting tonight that God put you at a job that you have a lot of lost folk because they can come to a saved person to know how saved folk post to act. You ought to be glad that God gave you some weeble wobble file down Christians because you're supposed to stand in the gap to show them how a real Christian is supposed to live. You ought to be glad that God allowed you to come to church tonight because you ought to let everybody else know that you don't mind shouting amen. So not only am I a ruler, but now I'm able to do something that everybody else can't do. I want to hear him say, well done. But I'm not working for him to say it. I want to hear it. But I'm not working just for him to say it. I'm working to give him the glory. I'm working to tell the story. I'm working because I love it. I'm working because I love him. And because I love all of that, he's going to say it. You ready? He says, because I'm going to be ruler over many. And Brother Cherry gave me his notes. And he told me it was the second advent. Which means it's the second coming of Jesus Christ. Don't twist it. It's not the second coming of God.
is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because God been here all the time. And, 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 and when he comes back, watch what it tells me. That because of what I've done, that I wasn't working to get it. But while and because I worked, I got it. You, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't hear me. I'm not working to get it. But because I'm working, I got it. And can I tell you what I got? Not what I have, what I got. Brother Land say, give it all you got. Because this may be your last time. Can I tell you tonight, tonight be the last time we might see one another. But one thing for certain, I want to hear him say. Serving well done. Don't you sit here and start hollering because I'm laying across there. Y'all better have some church. And you know what he's going to say. Serving. Well done. Here's the shouting piece. For all of that. The test of their service was not how much they earned, but how hard they tried. And because of that, he tells me to enter. And the place where I'm entering, everybody can't go. This is where the separation comes. He tells me to enter into the joy of the Lord. Because of what I've done, because of what he said to me, I'm able to, in other words, I'm going to be at the welcoming table. Check it, check it, check it out, check it out, check it out. The reward was based on faithfulness and not his results. You may never get where I think you should be. But if you are where God want you to be, it's reason enough to give him praise. I'm gone. We're not going to be here after 8 o'clock tonight, but I, I, I have to kind of tell you something. First, they were given rulership. The rulership is the responsibility. Then they were given an interest. And, 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 and watch this interest. When I entered that outside door, I walked into a thermometer. Into hand sanitizer. I ain't getting no joy in there. In fact, Sister Langston had to go back and get it. She didn't get no joy in that. She did it to remain safe. But when she walked in the other door, in the joy of the Lord, I watched her. And while we were talking calmly outside, when she got in here, she put a new pep in her step. And as she was going to the seat, she was waving at folk, but she was waving at the Lord. She was waving at folk, she was waving at the I come by to tell you, when you have the interest in the joy of the Lord, you don't have nothing but joy. I need somebody to tell me tonight that you have joy because the Lord has been good to you. You have joy because he's been better to you than you can be to yourself. I'm out now. Can I close this thing and tell you what some of these verses say? It says, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. But the Amplified say, enter into and share the joy. Share the delight. Share the blessedness. I, I believe that's why Brother Hill played a song, Blessed Quiet. Share in the blessing which your master enjoys. I think I told y'all this. In the last eight to ten years, um, 
sporting events for me have changed. Well, Sister Miller and I used to go sit in the stands with the people. We sit in the suite. Well, we used to go to Papa Do's and Red Lobster back in the day. We thought we were living fat on the hog. Every now and then we treat ourselves to Ruth Chris. And if you've been to Ruth Chris, it costs you about $200 to feed a family of four. Now, we don't have the kind of money to do it every week. But every now and then, from Langston, we do it. And my mother, she was getting feeble and aged. I thought about how much my mother did for me. And I say, my mother gave her all for me. And anybody that has or had a mother have to admit your mother did everything she could for you. Even when your daddy was trying to toughen you up and say, boy, you ain't gonna never be nothing hanging around your mama. Your mama did some stuff for you. And I had tears in my eyes because I thought about my mother did everything for me. And I had to take my mom in her latter days to some of the places that she never got to experience but that her son was experiencing. And I had an opportunity. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about sitting with the master. I had an opportunity to let her order her some food. And she said, well, what am I supposed to get? I said, whatever you want. But I would not show her the bill until she got through eating. And I said, was it good? She said, boy, that was one of the best steaks. I, I think she's probably rubbing her stomach in hell. I said, you enjoyed it? I, boy, I, I enjoyed that. I can't wait to come back here. I say, I just wanted you to see how your son and daughter rub shoulders with some folk. But the Lord has blessed us. And I want to give you what you gave me. I say, but I want to leave this bill so you can see what you ate. I think it was five of us. And the bill was like $380 or $400. She say, Lord, have mercy. And I say, baby, don't worry about the money. It's a blessing that God gave me that money that you can enjoy what the master enjoys. All I'm trying to tell you, when you enter into the joy of the Lord and he said that you're able to be where the master enjoys, he says, from now on, you're the master's partner. I'm out. But I'm out with this. I believe that's why the songwriter says, whatever God has for me, it is for me. And whatever he has for me, I'm going to do the best I can with it. I'm not concerned what they're doing on the other side of town. I'm just glad that God trusted me. I, I'm just glad that he trusted me to, enough to put something under my care. I'm glad that the Lord gave me the word and I gave God my word that I'll do the best I can. And tonight I challenge you. I challenge you because one of these when it's all over, I surely want to hear his sweet, melodious voice say, servant, well done, 
Thou good, thou faithful servant, thou has been faithful over just a few. Yeah, yeah. Now, he did not say, Brother Jerry, come on up higher. He said, but I'll make you ruler over many things. And there's a colon there, which means Sister Rashonda Jones hesitated. In other words, let me bask in the beauty of the promises that he gave me. Let, me. let me share my joy with somebody else. Because after sharing, I'm going to enter. Thou into the joy of thy Lord. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God cover you on tonight. Tonight in our invitation period now, somebody, whether you're in the building, whether you're on Zoom, Facebook, Instagram, whether you're watching on YouTube, you may not have a church home. And I dare not let this opportunity pass and not allow you to have the opportunity to come join the Mount Hebron Church. You could place it in your social media feed. That if you are on Zoom, you could place it in your chat. If you are on Facebook, you could place it either in your comment section or either your I am. If you are on Instagram, you can place it in your DMs. Or if you're not electronically inclined or you're watching on YouTube, we ask that you would dial the number to the office administrator's office. That number is 713 733 Nine one seven zero seven one three seven three three nine one seven zero. This is our invitation to you tonight. It is ours to extend, yours to accept or reject. May God bless you and may God keep you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over the place tonight. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. Let's move directly to our offertory period. As many of you have already given your offering to your different ministries, you have already paid your tithes. We ask that if you have not done so, that you go right ahead and utilize either our Givelify, our Cash App, which is dollar sign, the Mount 7817. Givelify, the Mount Heber Missionary Baptist Church, Houston, Texas. Or you can leave your envelopes on the table as we make preparation to give. That you can leave your offering, you can leave your envelopes with your ministry names on them. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for what you are doing even right now. On your way out, if you would drop your offering, if you would drop your envelopes right where Brother Cherry is, he will handle and take care of that. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And always remember, your blessings are tied to your giving. 
even with this parable tonight, it dealt with money. It dealt with talents. It deals with even spiritual blessings. So we ask that you act according. God will continue to get the glory, even by our giving. Lord, how we thank you for your gift, for you allowing us to be givers. We thank you for you giving us the gifts to give back to you. And that you don't ask for the whole thing. But you only ask for 10% of the more. And we know, Master, that you love a cheerful giver. Thank you for those that have so graciously given already. And we ask you, Master, that you touch the hearts of those that are even at home that have not paid tithes nor offerings since this COVID-19 has started. That you let them know that even though they are home, should not stop them from giving for the ongoing of thy kingdom. Touch their hearts. Touch their minds. That giving is the right thing. Giving is the best thing. Because even when we look at Cain and Abel, it was about giving. We thank you for what you've already done. We ask that you take what we have given. That you make it enough for what we need. And that we still have an abundance left over. That we can continue the ongoing of thine kingdom. We ask it in the all wise name of Jesus and for his sake. And all of God's people on all five locations said amen. Amen. We thank you for tonight. Uh, as we make preparation to go, let us stand. As we make ready, make sure you see Brother Cherry on your way out you have not given your offering on tonight, if you have not given your tithes on tonight, make sure you see him. Uh, brother and Sister Charter, would you all uh, come to my office briefly for a second? I would love to see you all. Let's continue to uh, mask up. Let's continue to make sure that you be safe. And I will applaud those that the vaccination rate went up last week we want to continue to impress it we want to continue to ask and beg and push and pull and everything else we can do to make sure that people get vaccinated uh, if you know someone that do not want to get vaccinated for whatever reason and you don't have the answer you call me I'll give you the answer and then you go back and talk to them did I miss anything All right, let's go. Lord, how we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, for your love and kindness, and for your word tonight. I thank you personally, Lord, for what you have given me, that I'm able to utilize it to uplift your name. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, never allow us to leave your presence. We thank you for your manifold blessings while we ask you to hear our people prayers, that you bless all of our sick and our shut in and be with sister Kirby and sister Willie Bell we thank you for what you've already done in their lives and so many more we want to pray for our brother Stokenberry and so many more that are sick and under the weather pastor Alan O'Aaron and so many more we ask you to hear our cry in the righteous name of Jesus and for his sake and all the people say Amen. Amen.